So, deception is a tool that our enemy uses against us, right? So how do we know when we are being deceived? And what ways can we be deceived? And how do we guard ourselves against deception? Well, this is actually going to be what we're discussing in our new series here on Straight Word. Be not deceived. And today we're going to look at those foundational questions and really take a look at what deception is. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I am his humble servant, and this is another episode of Straight Word. Once again, we're starting a brand new series today, which is Be Not Deceived, where we're going to talk about deception, and we're going to talk about where it comes from, how we can guard ourselves against it, and actually going to look at ways we've been deceived and how we can correct those as well. This is a very important, very important, very important series. And I've been doing a lot of studying and praying about this. I can see where the Holy Spirit is guiding us uh, because it's very uh, foundational that we've done a How to Pray series. We've done a Spiritual Warfare series. Now we're taking a hands-on approach and looking at deception and how it changes our lives. Like I said, today we're going to look at some foundational questions. Starting off with what is deception and how does it affect us? Of course, as we studied in our spiritual warfare series, deception is a tool that the enemy uses to manipulate and misguide us, to get us to believe things against the truth or our beliefs from the Word of God. Now, I've looked at a few scriptures and it seems that there are different types of deceptions. So we're going to break it down into three groups and look at where deception comes from. So let's go ahead and dig into some scripture and we're going to look at the first group or the first method of deception. For that, turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. That's Jeremiah 17 and 9. And it reads as follows. The heart is deceitfully above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So this makes it very plain and very simple. The first level of deception is self-deception. And it starts within your heart. Think about it. The things that you desire naturally or on a, 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 a fleshly level are things that your, your heart is going to talk you into believing are good things. How do we know this is true? Of course, we always go back to the word to confirm such things. Let's go back to our, our most popular example that we like to take a look at. And that is the first deception that we see in scripture, the fall of mankind. If you remember in Genesis chapter three, when the serpent was talking to Eve, yes, he did deceive her by saying, if you eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not surely die. That was his lie that he told her. But what happened when deception set in her heart? If you continue reading, you'll see that Eve began to see that that fruit was good. She thought that it was good for food. She began to desire it because she saw it as something that would make one wise. So her heart was working full time and it was deceiving her into believing the lie over the truth. So that's the first level of deception. Let's take a look at some more scripture to confirm that. Take a look with me at Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to read starting from verse 7. Galatians 6 and 7. And it reads, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. 
For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So what is this scripture telling us? Once again, it is showing us how one can deceive him or herself. We all know the teaching that says you shall reap what you sow. So all of the things that we're doing in our lives, the decisions that we make, the actions that we take, are sowing seeds into our future. If you sow a bad seed now and expect a good result later, this scripture is telling us that you are deceiving yourself. Once again, that is deception that comes from within. And we really have to guard our heart against this. And one way of doing so is, is staying in line with the scripture and living according to what the word tells us to do. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Let's go to James chapter 1 and we're going to look at verse 22 James chapter 1 verse 22 there it reads but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves very plain very simply put be a doer of the word not just a hearer only deceiving yourself so it's not enough just to read the word it's not enough just to hear a sermon it's not enough just to know what the Bible says but you also have to live what the word says this scripture is showing us that those who just hear or just study the Bible and know what it says but don't live such you are deceiving yourself into believing that you can reap the good benefits of the word without actually living it in your life okay so that's the first level of deception self-deception deception that comes from within let's take a look at a scripture that's going to introduce the next level of deception to us for that we're going to go to Matthew chapter 24 verse 24 as well Matthew 24 and 24 and there it reads for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect Wow so what is this really talking about Matthew chapter 24 is actually Christ in the middle of teaching his disciples what to expect in the end times what are the signs that are going to let us know that the end is at hand? And this is one of the things he's showing them. In the end, the enemy is going to be ramped up to really get his goal done. So he's going to be deceiving as many folks as possible. And he's going to have people out there who are doing his work as well. So you're going to see false prophets and false teachers out there doing the same thing that the enemy is trying to do to you which is deceive you this is showing us that the deception is going to get so strong in the end time that it's going to be hard to tell the truth from the lie even the very elect would have been deceived if it were possible but because of God's promises that's not going to happen to the very elect so this is telling us the second level of deception that's deception that comes from someone else. An outward approach of deception. A lot of times we flat out call it lying. So we have to once again line ourselves with the word. Know what the word says for ourselves. And live that out in order to guard ourselves against that type of deception. Now... There's another type of deception that we're going to discuss. And this type of deception, a lot of people don't want to believe it's true. But it is. And we're going to go to the word just to prove that and just to get an understanding of that for ourselves. For this, we're going to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to start reading at verse 7 on down to verse 12. And there it reads, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. 
only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness and of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness wow so that was very loaded so let's take a look at what this is really saying well first of all we've take we already know and we've said it plenty of times already our enemy is coming to deceive us this scripture uh, like Matthew 24 is talking about what is going to come in the end times and how will we be able to be aware of the deception coming and guard ourselves against it let's take a close look at verse number 10 though verse number 10 is showing us why this deception is going to affect so many people the second half of it says because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved so those who will be deceived will be, see, be deceived because they did not have a love for the truth. That is what is going to save us from the deception. A love for the truth. Does that mean a love for tradition? Does that mean a love for what has been taught? No. And what we're going to take a look at in this series is a lot of the things that we have been taught. And a lot of our traditions are deception. Things we think are good, things we think we're doing in God's name, some of those aren't good. We have been deceived. But it's okay because by studying this word, we're going to learn better. And from now into the future, we're going to do better. Wow. So let's look. What is this third level of deception that? this scripture tells us about in 2 Thessalonians. Let's look closely at verse number 11. This is the kicker. It said, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. What? That's right. God shall send strong delusion to those people who do not love the truth so that they believe the lie remember Christ said he come he will come back not to create world peace but he's gonna come with a sword a sword bring a warfare and division division between those who are righteous and those who are not so this is showing us how that is gonna happen those who do not love the truth God is gonna give them a strong delusion so that they be separated from those who are righteous. This is real deep. And it's, it might be kind of weird thinking that God would do something like this. But there are plenty of uh, examples in scripture of God doing so. And for a little homework assignment, I want you to find an example. I'll give you a hint on it. There's an example in the Bible where God sent a lying spirit to some false prophets if you can find that example go ahead and put that down in the comments and we'll discuss how that applies to our teaching okay so we've taken a look at three types of deception self-deception that comes from within deception that comes from another source or another individual and then we talked about the great greatest type of deception Deception that God will send to those who do not love the truth. How do we guard ourselves against these types of deception? Know the word of God for yourself. Read and study the word of God. But remember, be not just a hearer of the word, but a doer also. So live out the things that God's word instructs us to do. 
line ourselves up with the will of the Heavenly Father. And this way, we will be protected by His will. And we will be lovers of the truth, which is God's word. And we will be guarded against these types of deception. Man, I'm so glad that we could take this time out to really dig into deception. This is going to be the foundation of the series to come. Of course, what we're going to get into are ways that we have been deceived in today's time. And how can we correct the things that we've been deceived in our lives? It's time to take out the blindfolds and really get into God's will. All right, well, let's go ahead and send up a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for allowing us once again this, this time and this opportunity to study your holy word. We thank you for revealing to us uh, how not to be deceived. We like to ask that the Holy Spirit lead and guide us in these teachings uh, so that we can apply these teachings to our lives, that we can uh, actually live in a way that you have for us to live according to your will. Dear Heavenly Father, please remove the blindfolds from our eyes in any ways that we have been deceived. Show us and correct our ways through your instruction. In Yahshua's precious name we pray. Thank you. It is done. Alright, so once again I am his humble servant. We will continue the Be Not Deceived series. We'll be digging deeper into ways that we have been deceived in today's time. That's inside and outside of the body of believers. So you don't want to miss that. But until next week, remember, always read the word for yourself so you can get the straight word with no chase.